Welcome back to the Parasitology Lecture Series. The point of this lecture is to discuss pulmonary parasitosis. We're done with focal lesions. Now let's proceed to diffuse lesions, which include transient infiltrates and alveolar slash interstitial changes. For diffuse transient infiltrates, we refer to the well-documented Loeffler syndrome. Loeffler syndrome is a pulmonary disease associated with multiple possible causes, which include Ascaris infections, hookworm infections, and strongyloidus infections, and sometimes Toxocara infections as well. Loeffler's disease is also called your transient eosinophilic pneumonitis. It is an allergic reaction to parasitic larva. Some people associate this with larval migration to the lungs, which is questionable. And some theories would also involve immunologic hyperresponsiveness to parasitic infections. In animal models, they identify the pathophysiology as T cell mediated and may also be due to circulating interleukin 5s. Most theories, however, suggest that the main theory involved in Loeffler syndrome is immunologic hyperresponsiveness rather than the actual lung transit of parasites. Try to recall the life cycle of Ascaris and hookworm. The left side is the Ascaris life cycle, while the right side is the hookworm life cycle. Both of these soil transmitted helmets actually cause Loeffler syndrome at one point in their life cycle, especially when they undergo their individual long phases. There. Please take note that the other well known soil transmitted helminth, your Trichuris trichura, does not cause Loeffler syndrome because it doesn't have a long phase. The symptoms associated with Loeffler syndrome would be dry cough, wheezing, dyspnea, and sometimes low grade fever. However, the symptoms usually resolve spontaneously after two to four weeks, which corresponds to the lung phases of these parasites. There is debate as to the usefulness of radiologic imaging in the diagnosis of Loeffler syndrome. If present, it would manifest as diffuse infiltrates sometimes with transient, non-segmental consolidation, and in the case of Toxocara, widespread patchy areas of consolidation may be present. The management of Loeffler syndrome is usually treatment of the offending agent. However, Escharisis and hookworm infections only have a temporary lung phase. So probably, it is best to just wait it out, and then treat the Escharisis and hookworm infection with the appropriate drugs. Diffuse alveolar or diffuse interstitial infiltrates are exemplified by these other parasitic infections. You may have pulmonary schistosomiasis, hyperinfection syndrome, and tropical pulmonary eosinophilia. You may recall that schistosomiasis is caused by Schistosoma haponicum and the other Schistosoma species. Hyperinfection syndrome is a more severe disease caused by strongyloides tercoralis, while tropical pulmonary eosinophilia or TPE is caused by filarial worms. Pulmonary schistosomiasis is an aberrant manifestation of schistosomiasis. The symptoms associated with pulmonary schistosomiasis is consistent with Loeffler-like symptoms during the acute phase. However, during the chronic phase, wherein multiple worms and multiple schistosoma ova get lodged in the lungs, it may manifest as schistosoma-associated pulmonary hypertension or There are three theories according to Papa Met according to Papa Mathikis et al. in 2014, which would explain schistosoma-associated pulmonary hypertension. Number one, egg granuloma and obstruction. Number two, obliterative arteritis and vasculopathy with or without the presence of schistosoma eggs. And number three, portopulmonary hypertension in sequence. The manifestation of schistosoma associated pulmonary hypertension includes dyspnea, chest pain, hypoxemia, and clubbing of the fingernail. <laughs> Radiologic diagnosis of pulmonary schistosomiasis is possible 
and you may see ground glass opacification and the halo sign, which is a series of smaller nodules. There, 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 there. Which is surrounded by a ground glass halo. The ground glass halo is thought to be a non specific finding and could be related to immune complex deposition or sometimes eosinophilic infiltration of the lung parenchyma. Pulmonary strongyloidiasis is part of the disseminated strongyloidiasis spectrum, and this is usually seen in immunocompromised patients. Hyperinfection syndrome happens when your body cannot control the strongyloidus infections anymore. Therefore, you may see strongyloidus in almost all parts of your body, including the lungs. Tropical pulmonary eosinophilia, or TPE for short, again is caused by filarial worms, particularly the genus Wichereria bancrofti. This is caused by persistent microfilaremia, which affects the pulmonary structure. The most common chest radiography finding is bilateral fine diffuse reticulonodular opacities in the middle and lower lung zones. The symptoms associated with TPE is very similar to Loeffler syndrome, which includes dry cough, wheezes, dyspnea, low-grade fever, weight loss, and malaise. What is important to note, however, is that you should know how to differentiate TPE from Loeffler syndrome based on their differences in onset, duration, timing, pathogenesis, and prognosis. I'll give you one example. The onset of TPE is usually slow, which might take days or weeks or even months to develop, while Loeffler syndrome onset is rather rapid. The duration of TPE can last up to several months, while Loeffler syndrome would last only two to three weeks. One is worse at night, while the other one has no particular preferred timing. One is caused by the immune response to chronic microfilaria, while the other one is caused by acute infection, particularly a specific phase of the life cycle of the parasite. As far as prognosis is concerned, one is chronic and one is self-limiting. The treatment of alveolar and interstitial infiltrates would be depending on the offending agent. You have to treat schistosomiasis to treat pulmonary schistosomiasis. Hyperinfection syndrome is also treated medically, usually with ivermectin to treat strongyloid disinfections, and TPE is treated by treating the filarial disease, usually with diethylcarbamazine and albendazole. So in summary, Clinical approach to pulmonary parasitosis discusses two major classifications of lesions associated with pulmonary parasites. You have your focal lesions versus your diffuse lesions. Under focal lesions would be your cystic lesions, including your echinococcus, your coin lesions, which includes your diarofilariasis, consolidation and pleural effusion, exemplified by pulmonary amoebiasis. We've, had, we've also had a special discussion on the lung fluke, Paragonimus westermani, and then we proceeded to diffuse lesions, which includes transient infiltrates, exemplified by Loeffler syndrome, and diffuse alveolar and interstitial changes, exemplified by pulmonary strongyloidiasis, hyperinfection syndromes, and tropical pulmonary eosinophilia. At the end of the day, you should be able to include parasitic infections in your differential diagnosis for patients manifesting with pulmonary disease. And that's the whole point of this lecture. I hope you learned something. See you next time. If you learned something, feel free to share this video. And don't stop learning.